So um, we'll get going. Uh, uh, in this part five, we're going to talk about the uh, general descent model and the estimation method. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, methods for e uh, evaluating model fit using the DIC um, information criteria and also using the estimated mean and variances. Uh, then we're going to talk about centering. Um, we'll talk about the uh, mirror model that you heard a little bit about yesterday, uh, measurement error autoregressive model. And the final topic will be adding covariates in the uh, DSM fr framework. And we'll also talk about the new model that we're working on, um, the residual DSM model. Um, that's going to be part of version uh, 8.1. And this is basically kind of the paper that uh, has uh, all the details pretty much of this talk. So the general descent framework uh, was uh, designed to merge the time series structure equation and multi level and the uh, FEM time varying effect models. Those are basically the models that uh, the coefficients, uh, the regression and structural coefficients depend on time. So these four uh, structure, four uh, concepts are combined into a generalized uh, framework in M plus 8. Uh, the, the preset here is that we have these uh, variables, dependent variables, yit, eta, it, and xit, and these are the uh, 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 dependent, uh, latent, and covariates for individual i at time t. In such data, uh, there are four distinct sources of correlations. And the descent framework actually allows you to parse out these correlations, figure out which one is which, evaluate them, uh, determine them. And uh, these correlations are as follows. The correlation due to individual specific effects, and that's basically taking care of the multi-level um, aspect of the model. Correlations due to proximity of observations, and that's uh, basically the time series uh, concept. Correlations between different variables, and that's the um, SEM part of the model. And correlations due to the same stage of evolution, which is the, um, uh, the FEM uh, modeling framework. Uh, the DSEM model, uh, as you heard already, it uh, consists of actually three separate models. Single level model, two level model, and a cross classified model. And uh, you know, in M plus, you actually you have to say two level to get the two level. Um, type equals cross to get the cross classified. Um, we're going to talk about the cross classified as being the most general model. And uh, the model basically starts with this main decomposition equation here, basically, that decomposes uh, a dependent variable into three separate components. Um, this will be the individual contribution to that variable. Individual, uh, this will be the time specific contribution, and that's the residual. In M plus terms, this will be basically the within level component of the variable, the between uh, cluster component of the variable, and the uh, between time. So we have the three different, uh, two, two separate between levels, and it's essentially a cross classified model. So if you uh, are familiar with the uh, model that we had in version 7.5, which is a, a cross classified model, that basically this is the, the, the fundamental equation that we used also there. Um, and we separate the variable in, into these three variables. They're all latent. Uh, and uh, for each of these three components, we um, uh, built it their own structure equations. Uh, the, uh, this is the cross-classified model. And um, the uh, two-level and the single-level DSM models, they're basically special case of this. And if you remove this component, the time-specific component, uh, then you get the two-level model. If you remove both this the, um, time-specific and the individual-specific component, then you get a single-level model. The cross-classified is the whole version. Um, so uh, the cross-classified is the most general model, but uh, uh, in, in reality, we go, I'm going to talk about it just because, um, just to um, uh, give you the, the most general model. But the, in reality, uh, the cross-classified model um, is the hardest model to estimate. So just keep in mind some, some, of the, some uh, issues that are related to cross-classified models. So uh, the cross-classified model actually requires that the time scale is aligned between individuals. So for example, it has to be something that uh, uh, time t uh, for, individual, for every individual means the same time t. So for example, second grade would mean that something happens in second grade for everybody. So if this is not, um, if the time scale is not aligned, 
and you have, for example, observation, observational studies uh, that time one really doesn't mean the anything particular about uh, time it being time one. Uh, it's just uh, when you basically started observing the individual, uh, then um, cross-classified model would generally not apply. So the cross-classified model doesn't apply for every application. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, the two-level DSEM model is really the, uh, has a simpler formulation, is the most common and introductory model for applications. So most uh, probably you, your first DSEM uh, application would be actually a two-level model. Uh, the two-level model also uh, requires uh, a fewer time points. Uh, if, if it, it can be estimated with fewer number of observations. So the requirements on the data set uh, with two-level models are smaller. Um, the Two-level DSEM model is easier to um, uh, is easier to estimate compared to the cross-classified because you just have much fewer number of random effects. Uh, in in addition to that, something that's related to the current implementation in M plus is that the cross-classified model uh, can sometimes be very slow. In particular, when um, uh, when um, when you have uh, um, subject-specific uh, uh, autoregressive coefficient and subject specific variances. Um, what happens in that case is that the structural equation models that uh, you end up with on the within level becomes so specific to the time and individual that for every time data point in your data set, you actually have to analyze a completely different um, structural equation model. So in those cases, the speed of the cross-classified decent model actually is um, uh, much, uh, much slower than the two level models. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, the two-level DSM models pretty much, um, regardless of what the model is, will actually give an acceptable speed uh, for estimation. Uh, so one, one more issue here that I have, uh, didn't mention is that, uh, you know, the, the, in terms of the requirements on the data set, um, in cross-classified models, actually, uh, there is an additional issue about uh, uh, the uh, the, the, on the data, that not just the, the amount of points and the, the data, but also if it's particularly difficult to estimate uh, cross-classified models with unbalanced designs, because um, remember that for each uh, time point, we estimate a time-specific effect. And um, when you have um, an unbalanced design, say a particular individual is observed for a very long time, uh, then for these uh, later points uh, in the um, uh, later points in time, you only have very few observations to estimate these time-specific effects. So um, generally, time cross-classified models actually work better when you have, at each time point, you have uh, multiple observations, so you can actually estimate uh, well uh, the um, uh, random effects that are specific for this time. So uh, here is basically uh, um, so basically, we, we are going to show you now the uh, uh, models uh, for this. So this is the fundamental equation. We split the variables into these three parts, and each of these three variables is going to have its own uh, structural model. And here's what the structural model looks for the within variable. So basically, it looks almost like a standard structural equation model. Um, you have the um, dependent variables, and there, this is sort of what we call the measurement equation. You have the dependent variables measuring some latent factors. Um, you can also regress the uh, dependent variable on some uh, on other dependent variables and, uh, and covariates. Uh, the main difference between this the, this, this, uh, this this is the structural equation, which is basically allows you to regress latent variables on other latent variables and also covariates. So the main difference between this, this equation and the standard structure equation model is the fact that we allow, uh, these, uh, we allow in the equation on the right-hand side to be uh, all uh, latent variables uh, from the current period, but also from the previous L periods, where L is the um, lag of the uh, model. Uh, so this is why we have this sum here, so that uh, any um, uh, latent variable that's in the previous uh, L period, so that's the index T minus L, uh, is, uh, can participate in, um, in this as predictor for the dependent variable in the current, in the current time, current time point. One thing to note um, right off the bat here is that the, these predictors, when they're on the right-hand side, when you have uh, Y variables on the right-hand side, that is not actually the observed Y, but it's the centered version. So on the within level, we never use um, 
uh, these depend on the dependent variables are always uh, centered. In other words, the uh, contribution from the individual specific from the individual and the contribution from time are already removed, and so this is just a residual part. Um, so these are um, yeah, these are centered versions. So this model basically is a combination of the state space model that uh, uh, has been the center of attention in uh, uh, in the last few decades. Uh, of dynamic structural modeling. It also combines the dynamic factor model. Uh, and then it merges this with the uh, full same functionality, such as uh, covariates, path analysis, regressions among latent variables, CFA, mimic models, correlated uniqueness. You also have locked loadings, loadings that are you know, uh, for the previous, uh, the latent variables from the previous periods. And then in addition to this uh, main uh, generalization on the within level, we of course add the core extensions of uh, two level modeling, cross classified modeling, as well as categorical variables. Uh, on, on level two and level three, uh, the individual level, um, the, the level for the individual effects, um, we just have a standard, the standard structure equation models, and same on the time specific levels. And also note that we he here we can also use um, uh, observed variables that uh, on these levels, such as uh, you know time invariant individual uh, level variables that are time invariant or uh, time um, specific variables that are in individual invariant. Uh, and, and the same thing applies for covariates. And here also we have latent variables on the both both levels. Uh, in this uh, decent model, we also have on the within level, pretty much all the parameters can be random. So we have random intercepts, and uh, uh, generally, uh, you know, that's basically the, these fundamental components are sort of uh, considered random intercepts. Um, in addition to that, um, slopes can be random, loadings can be random, autoregressive parameters can be random. Uh, variances can be random now as well, uh, as you heard in yesterday, and that's basically a, a version 8 feature that's uh, available not just for DSM models, but also we implemented that for non dsm models with the Bayesian estimation. Uh, random covariances, um, you know, we, we uh, discussed this quite a bit. Uh, we did not find an acceptable model that we were all agree on, and um, uh, the reason we did not, and so we, they're technically not implemented. You can uh, do what uh, Ellen's example yesterday was showing how to do random variances. You can introduce factors, common factors between variables, and then have those factors have um, subject specific variances. Uh, so that's our way of actually um, having random variance, random covariances. Uh, but technically, we have not found another pure and easy model that would avoid this, um, the need for introducing an additional factor. So uh, the, the reason we don't, uh, the reason we don't, we have not found an acceptable model is because we want to have a model that uh, um, not just has a random random covariance, but you can actually use the random effects in that uh, that, that um, yields the random covariances. We want to have these random effects on the between level, and that's a little tricky with random covariances because when you have uh, regressions on the between level, those things actually go out of bounds very easily. So. It's not a straightforward thing to do. And it, it, there are models that would do it, but uh, then they'll be very difficult for you to interpret them. So, so we have not uh, yet implemented that. Um, so every um, random effect uh, consists of two portions in the cross-classified framework. You can have a, uh, uh, it's a basically uh, an addition of an individual specific effect and a time specific effect. So if when you introduce a, um, a random slope, of some kind, you get um, actually two random slope, one on each of the two between levels. And those are assumed normally distributed random effects and are technically considered to be latent variables on those between uh, levels. And so they're part of these vectors on level two, uh, latent vectors on level two and level three. So this is basically the, uh, the main decomposition for a random effect uh, as long for all the random effects except the random variances. So the random variances, we use a log normal distribution, where again, uh, uh, so the uh, random variance is an exponent of, uh, of the sum of these two random effects, one from each of the two levels. And of course, that's done to, keep, to make sure that the variance is, uh, stays always positive. 
So if you want to in incorporate um, the, this capability that all these uh, coefficients can be random, you can rewrite the, uh, the, the equation on the within level model in a more general form. Uh, and so all of these parameters now have, uh, you can actually add additional index to show that they actually vary across, they can vary also across individual and time. So all these coefficients can uh, have these indices i and t. So that's a more general way to write the model. Um, so the general assumption of the model is that all residual, residual, uh, uh, all residual variables in the model, so all these variables here, those are assumed um, normal. So basically we state that as being this being conditional normality. Uh, categorical variables are incorporated in the model using the underlying y star approach. So it's basically um, a probit link function. Um, and we, uh, in these equations, we basically use y star um, to incorporate categorical variables, which are subsequently um, cut through a threshold parameter, through threshold parameters. Uh, missing data is also treated using um, likelihood approach. So uh, under the missing at random assumption, uh, the estimation guarantees uh, consist, uh, consistent estimates. Um, and the reason we say it's likelihood based is because uh, we use uh, the MCMC estimation, which is li likelihood based uh, and uh, asymptotically that guarantees consistent estimation. Uh, uh, and I just, just to point out that, uh, you know, these uh, time series models, they have been, of course, in the econometrics literature for a very long time. But even for uh, single level models, uh, missing, having missing data in time series models is a, an in innovation uh, which is part of the decent framework. And, and missing data will, uh, generally is not incorporated in these uh, uh, traditional econometrics approaches.